Okay, so I've just refreshed this. I thought, well, while we're waiting, I'll just refresh it again. Um, it's not quite ready yet. Yeah, that's what I figured. I thought we might as well cover while I'm waiting for that to actually finish. Um, why don't we look at Sassify 3, which is already there. How do you gain access? So we created the virtual machine. We can see it there on the portal it's being created. How do you actually get um, its root password? How do you get any details about it? Well, on the software um, CLI, there is virtual server detail. And let's go and get the details about Sassify 3. And that will give you, the minute your machine is finished running, the IP addresses that you can gain access to the machine on. How do you actually find out the password? Well, it's the same command again with passwords. There we go. So now we have the IP addresses and the root password. So I can now SSH, whoops, if I can spell. Let's take the uh, public. I haven't started my array network at the moment. And we'll just take the password and we're in. So once Sassify 4 comes back, we'll be able to run SL virtual server detail Sassify 4 minus minus passwords and we'll be able to get its password. So that's how you gain access to the machine after it's been built. So I guess another piece of the jigsaw that we can cover while um, while we're waiting on the uh, virtual machine to be built is let's build yet another virtual machine but this time I want to use the flex image that we created earlier um, the standard lamp one and um, one of the earlier tutorials so to find out my actual uh, what images are available uh, I can do SL image list and that'll give us a real long list of all the images that are available to us. So there's a whole load of public images there. But up here, here is our standard lamp. Now what I'm going to do is copy that global identifier, GUID. I'm going to take that into my buffer. And if we now go SL uh, VS create minus minus help. This tells us what we need to do. So in here, you will note that we did the minus host, minus domain name on our create statement, but it's also got a minus minus image with the GUID. So let's go back to our command for the SL create. And in here, instead of minus O, I'm going to do minus minus image equals and I'm going to put in the GUID that we just picked up from our list. I'm also going to name it Sassify 5 and that's it. That's It's that easy to use the flex image that we created earlier from the command line to create another virtual server in this instance Sassify 5 Let's hit return. Yes, I'll incur the charges. And hopefully, that will now go off and start preparing another virtual machine. Excellent. I'll wait for the emails to come through, which should be any second. There they are. I've just seen the email. And if I refresh, it's not showing it yet. Give it another couple of seconds. No, still not there. I've had another email getting started with Softlayer. So it should be very soon now. We will see our other virtual machine being created. There it is. So what was that? 20 seconds, 30 seconds from hitting return? So I'm going to just finalize on this. Um, I'm going to stop the video there. I'll come back and finalize logging into both of those servers once they're finished their builds. And then I'll show you how to cancel a server using the um, software CLI. So we're back for the final part. As you can see, 
All three machines are now there. They're all ready to rock and roll. We're ready to do stuff on them. So let's go and get access to them. I guess uh, we looked at this earlier on. Uh, SL, VS, Detail, um, and Sassify 4. Let's send it that. It's come back. So we now know it's on this public IP. Oh, I forgot to add the minus minus passwords and there's its root password so we can ssh root at uh, 37.58.87.106 uh, it's a new machine so I'll say yes and there's its password and we're in so it would be the same, exactly the same for the other machine. Um, we can get the details of Sassify 5 as well. So that shows you how useful it is. We've just created a virtual machine um, from scratch, which was a CentOS 664, and we've created a virtual machine using the standard lamp flex image that we built in one of the earlier tutorials. So a question I've had from um, a customer of mine was, is there a way of listening for the response from the create command and then on that response actually do something? Um, you know, actually make the machine notify me that it's actually done or it's finished. So one of the ways of doing that is you can actually have the, um, um, the soft layer um, virtual server ready command and actually ask it on in our instance when we were creating Sassify 4 we could have issued this command and done a wait of 600 seconds so it would loop and that would return to us ready when it's finished now that that's nice but then I've got to have the window open and have it waiting so one of the great features of Mac is um, the say command, um, which is very, very useful. So what I thought I'd do was show you, you could kick off a command um, to actually create a virtual machine. And then once that command is kicked off, you could actually write a little script. So um, what I would do is create a little um, software ready dot sure. Um, I could then um, create a little bash script here and in this bash script I'm going to create a variable called response which is going to be equal to um, slvs ready sassify4 um, I'm going to give it the weight, even though we know it's already ready, but that would that would loop around the weight. Um, I think that's the right syntax, yeah. And then I'm going to echo that response out. And not only am I going to echo it out, I'm going to say if, and put a tiny little condition in here, um, if the response... Is it minus EQ? No, that's for um, that's for integers. Equals ready. Then say job finished. I'll make the machine say job finished, which will actually tell me something's gone on. Um, I think that's yeah, that should work. Um, I'm going to mod this. And then let's execute it. And this is what will happen on your machine while you're looping around waiting for it to actually finish the job, almost like a callback. You, you could put other commands in there. I've just done a say for now. And let's Job even... finished. There we go. Job finished. And that's one of the handy things about Apple. You can actually make the computer tell you when the job's finished and you could get on with something. Um, I hope that was useful. That's uh, a short introduction to a callback function on when your virtual server is ready and how to use the soft layer command line interface tool.
My name's Eamon Killian. Thank you very much for watching. Well, we're almost there for tutorial nine, just bringing it all to a close now. What remains is to cancel our virtual machines. Um, I've just cancelled uh, Sassify 4 uh, because I wanted to make sure that I could show you exactly what happens when you do a cancel. Um, from this screen you can't actually see that it's been cancelled. Um, and if I just refresh again, we'll see whether it's actually now actioned that. Now it's still there, um, but it is in the process of being cancelled. So, um, from the command line, how do you actually use that to cancel the software virtual machine? So the first thing we're going to need is a list of our virtual machines. We need this because we need the actual unique identifier of, uh, in this case, Sassify 5. And then you use that in conjunction with the SL virtual server cancel. And then you give it the unique ID and hit return, cannot be undone, are we sure, uh, oh you've actually got it rather than a yes you've got to type in the actual number again as a safety feature. And that's it, it will come back in a second, done. So if we go back in here and we do a refresh there's nothing to actually tell you straight off that something's going on, that this has been cancelled. What you do have to do is just quickly look in here and you see we have a ticket raised which is virtual server cancellation there it is, the owner of the account and it will cancel that device. So it's that simple. Um, been through a lot in tutorial 9 on using the command line interface it's probably the softest landing or easiest trajectory to approach the APIs from. From tutorial 10, we're going to start really getting into the APIs and understanding how to control your software backend using the enormous amount of methods available. I think there's over 2400 methods now available within the API library to give us comprehensive control of the back end. My name's Eamon Killian. I hope this has been useful. A quick romp through how to use the software command line interface. Thank you very much.